In this video, I'm going to do a tutorial of how to set up your Xi Sentry node on a virtual private server. If you're watching this and you don't have a Xi node, I'll be doing a full deep dive on my channel of exactly what that is soon, but the TLDR is basically that Xi is an Arbitrum based layer three walletless and gas subsidized blockchain infrastructure for publishing Web3 games. The team and their partners have a focus on the Asian gaming markets, which is a big brain move in my opinion, because just like the rise of of free-to-play with microtransactions or the mobile gaming boom of the 2010s, adoption will first occur in Asia while Western gamers sling ridicule at the concept and come late to the party. I think if you're in the NFT gaming space or you're trading this gaming narrative, it's a no-brainer to acquire and run a couple of these Sentry nodes to accrue Xi's native token before their TGE event in 2024. So we're going to use Contabo VPS to set the node up because from what I could find uh, it is the most cost-effective provider for this service and with their cheapest plan you can get around 8 gigs of RAM and 4 CPU cores as well as 50 gigs of NVMe storage for around 5 euro a month. Of course you can go for a higher package if you want to use it for more than just running the nodes but this entry-level subscription meets the necessary hardware requirements for the node. There are a ton of other providers so if you want to shop around go for it but there's a link to Contabo in the description. It is not an affiliate link. My channel is way too small for that. So I'd really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel so I can provide as many people as possible with quality Web3 gaming and digital asset trading content. Let's get started and click on Cloud VPS and whichever plan you would like. Select a 12 month contract if you want to avoid the one time setup fee. Select the region that is closest to you for the lowest latency and then select 50 gigs of NVMe storage because it is superior to the regular SSD storage. For the operating system, we're going to choose Ubuntu and select the most up-to-date version in the drop-down menu, which is 22.04. You'll want to save these login and password details for your VPS because we'll need to use them later. The username will be root, like it says right here, and you can either come up with your own password or click the generate new password and copy and save it in a Word document. Don't worry though, if you forget or lose this password, it is very easy to reset. Leave object storage on none, same with no private networking and having just one IP address. You can always upgrade to these extra features in the future if you want to. Leave backup space on none, server management on unmanaged because we're going to manage our own server, and monitoring and SSL also on none. Next, you will register your details and pay for the subscription. Make sure to provide them with a real email address because you'll need the details that they will send to that address very shortly. After all of that, you'll arrive on a page which lets you know that it could take up to three hours for the VPS to be established. You'll also receive an email with your new login credentials and your customer service number as well as some more information on your VPS once it's set up and running. For me, the VPS was functioning within 10 minutes, but remember that it may take up to a few hours. Once you have received all of that information, head back to Contabo and log in, which will take you to your VPS dashboard. On the side menu, navigate to the VPS control section. Here you can do a few important things. You can reinstall a different operating system if you want to use something other than Ubuntu in the future. You can also check the status of the server to see if it is running or not, restart it, stop it, start it again, or download a snapshot. If you forget or want to change the password to the VPS, you can click here on manage and select password reset. There are also other options to recustomize the VPS like upgrading its hardware, changing its region, or ordering certain add-ons, etc. Next, we're going to connect to the server via an SSH client. I'm using the Bitvise SSH client, which is free. You can also use Putty, which is also free and open source, but personally, the Bitvise user interface just felt a little bit more robust and it has a great inbuilt encryption and security system as well. So just to be thorough, you can go here to this website. There's a link in the description. It's also not an affiliate link 
download the client and install it on your PC. Open the Bitwise SSH client once you've installed it. And now we're gonna go back to the VPS control and copy the IP address of your server. Paste this IP address in the host section of the Bitwise client. In the username section, type root. And in the port section, type 22. And then you can click on log in down at the bottom of the window. And now you're going to go and copy that password which you made and saved in a Word doc during the registration process and input it here. If you forgot it or you lost it, you can use the reset password option in the VPS control to make a new one. Once you have successfully logged into the VPS, click on new terminal console here on the side menu to open a command line interface for your VPS. Yes. Before we continue with the VPS setup, we're going to first check that the wallet you purchased your Zynode keys with has a Sentry wallet assigned to it and is funded with enough ETH to cover gas fees for a year or so. The easiest way to do this is through the Zy Sentry node desktop application. So go to the Zy website, link in the description, and download it if you haven't already. Install and open it and add the wallet address which holds your node keys to the add wallet prompt. From there, click on Sentry Wallet on the side menu, then click on Assign Keys from New Wallet, which will take you to a page which asks you to log into the wallet, which holds your node keys, so connect the correct wallet, sign and confirm the transaction to assign this Sentry Wallet to your wallet. Now go back to the Xi application and navigate back to the Sentry Wallet page, go to the top of the window and copy the address of this Sentry Wallet which you just assigned, and now you're going to want to send around 0.02 ETH on the Arbitrum chain to this Sentry Wallet per key that you purchased. So if you purchased 10 keys, you should send around 0.2 ETH, which will keep that Sentry Wallet functioning for around a year. Once you've done this and you see the balance update in the app, you can click on the three little dots next to the wallet address and click Export Wallet from the drop-down menu. This will display the private keys to that wallet, which we will need in a moment when we set up the Xi node on the VPS through the command line interface. Before we do that though, to make things a little bit easier, press on the Setup on Cloud button from the side menu of the node application. This will take you to the Xi Gitbook, which has all the necessary commands to set up the VPS, which we can copy and paste directly into the CLI. First, we need to click on step two, download and run Xi Sentry node in the Gitbook, and then navigate to the CLI on Cloud Server tab. Copy the first command, sudo apt update, and now let's go back to the command line interface we opened through the Bitwise SSH client. Right click to paste the command, and then press enter. Go back to the Gitbook and copy the second command, sudo apt install curl unzip, return to the CLI, right click to paste and press enter. Repeat this for the third command, press enter. Then for the fourth command, press enter. And the fifth command, press enter. Next, go to step 3A of the Gitbook, set up and fund the Sentry wallet, and navigate to the I'm using the Sentry node CLI tab. Here, copy the first command, list operators, and right click to paste it in the CLI. Press enter. Then go to your wallet and copy the address of the wallet which holds your node keys that you purchased and paste it in the CLI and press enter. Now check that the operator which comes up is the same address as the Sentry wallet which you just assigned and funded with ETH in the desktop application. If everything looks good, go back to the Gitbook and navigate to step 3B, start Sentry wallet, and go to the I'm using Xi Sentry node CLI tab. Copy the first command, boot operator, return to the CLI and paste it, press enter, and a prompt should come up which asks you to input the private key of the operator. Now go back to the Xi desktop application and copy the private key which was revealed to you when you clicked export wallet from the Sentry wallet page. Now paste this private key into the CLI and press enter. 
the VPS should now start running the node. It'll take a few seconds, but once it's done, you should see an update occur every five minutes or so with a timestamp and a confirmation that the node is running successfully. And now you're all set up. You can close all of the applications and tell everyone you're a Web3 developer. If you're having problems like there are errors popping up or you're unable to complete some of the steps, join the Zai Discord and there are plenty of great community members in there who will do their very best to help you out. Please do be aware though that currently you'll have to reinstall a lot of this on the CLI of your VPS each time that there is a new update to the node software. So you might want to save this video and come back to it when you need to. I hope this video was was helpful, please leave a comment, like the video, and subscribe to keep up with everything happening in the Web3 gaming space. Until next time, my friends, stay safe.